you as a journalist for years were able to balance and navigate this, navigating, as crazy as it may sound, your blackness with being a journalist, right? And again, you have sat down with some very, you know, uh, uh, controversial figures. You sat down with a lot of great people, but I'm wondering for you how you were able to seemingly navigate that so well, because they're like, we're still black at the end of the day, even though yeah. we're journalists. So how were you able to do that so successfully? So a couple of people have said that to me and I never really, really thought about it. But as I've you know been doing the interviews with the book, a couple of people have said to me, Hey, you know why we appreciated you so much is that you were authoritative, like a news person, you, but you were black enough for us. You know, you never let that black thing go. And so for me, I've always felt like, well, I was black before I became a journalist, right? I was born black. I wasn't born a journalist. And again, I, you know, we laugh and tease about Detroit, but there, there's something about being born in Detroit. There's a pride in being black. You know, Detroit was one of those cities that really was on the fore of electing black mayors. And there was a sense of, you know, what Motown was, and there was a sense of empowerment of black people. And so... For me, I can remember being at NBC and watching some of the black reporters who didn't want to do black stories because they didn't want to get pigeonholed. And I thought, well, you're already that. You know, when they, when they walk in, they see that you are black. They don't think, oh, no, there's a reporter. They see you as a black reporter. And so I was the opposite. I always wanted to do black stories. And I wanted to do black stories because I knew I could do them correctly, right? Because when I would watch them do them, I think, that ain't us. That's not what we do. Um, I was in Chicago, and they asked uh, Ann Curry and I to do some quote-unquote minority stories, right? And they said, we want you to do um, a story about the black vote in Chicago. And so I said, okay, cool, I'll do that. And the woman, young white girl, said, uh, "And so go to Cabrini Green. So for people who don't know, Cabrini Green was one of the big projects in Chicago. And I said, well, do you want to know what Cabrini Green voters are? She goes, no, it's just black people. Well, right there, I'm like, no, I ain't going to Cabrini Green. I'll get you some black people in Chicago because you do know we all don't live in Cabrini Green, they, right? Did they not know we don't I all don't, live in the projects? You know, I, don't, I know good times they did, but right, like, that right. wasn't But it. that's the point. They yeah. don't really know, mm. right? They see us in one light, the only light they know. I'm sure that they had been doing stories and they always told them, go to Cabrini Green because there's a bunch of black people there. They had no idea that the city is full of black people, rich, poor, you know, big. <laughs> Little, I mean, they're there. Yeah. And so it was important for me. So for me, you know, I wanted to keep my little Detroit swag. I wanted, I didn't want the blue blazer and a red tie and a white shirt, you know. So my clothes and just the way I carried myself, it stayed black enough, right? I wasn't my true self because none of us well, are on we TV, We can't right? usually be that on that. We're telling but <laughs> I was black enough and that was important to me.